Alleluia! Christ is risen! The Lord is risen indeed! Alleluia! Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, a rich food filled with marrow of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. The Word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as the first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, and then the twelve. Then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, and then all of the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I prosecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and this grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I have worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so we have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. 
When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. When I get to heaven, and I know it may sound presumptuous for me to say it, but I live by grace and believe in amazing grace. When I get to heaven, I certainly want to see the Lord. But I want to see dear members of family and friends, and those who have gone on before. There are many people I want to sit down and have some conversation with. But of all the biblical people, aside from the Lord himself, when I get to heaven, I want to meet Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene, who was one of the people, one of the women who followed the way and teachings of Jesus and who probably provided much of the funding for his movement. Mary Magdalene with some of the other women and only one of the male disciples stood with his mother Mary at the cross as he died. Mary Magdalene, who even after he died on that Easter morning got up with some of the other women early in the morning before the day had begun in the dark got up to perform the rituals of love to anoint the body of Jesus in his grave. I want to ask her, Mary, tell me what got you up that day. Tell me what got you to go to the tomb early in the morning when it was dark and you could barely see. Why did you get up and go to anoint his body. Mark's gospel says that you and the other women said to each other, you knew that Jesus had been buried in that tomb that had been provided by Joseph of Arimathea with Nicodemus's help. But a large stone had been rolled in front of the, the doorway into the tomb. And one of the women said to the other, who will roll away the stone for us? You knew the stone was there. You knew you couldn't move it. And yet you got up and you went anyway. Mary, tell me your secret. And I suspect she probably will say, well, we didn't know how we were going to roll away the stone. But we loved him and we got up and went anyway. It was hard because it was dark, but we loved him and we got up and we went anyway. Those roads could be dangerous at night, but we loved Jesus and we got up and we went anyway. Who will roll away the stone for us? We did not know, but we loved him and we got up and we went anyway. And let me tell you what love can do for you. When we got to the tomb, the stone had already been rolled away. 
and we shouted our hallelujahs and shouted our hallelujahs. He is risen. Last year in March, on March 13th, to be precise, another Mary Magdalene, her name Barbara, Barbara Clementine Harris, Bishop of the Church, a voice of love and justice and compassion, a voice of deep and profound faith, first woman to be consecrated a bishop in Anglican Christianity, died and entered eternal life. This was early in the pandemic. Fortunately for us, Dean Kelly Brown Douglas had worked with Bishop Barbara to make sure that her memoir was completed. And they completed it. And she gave it the title from the words of a gospel song that says, and I quote, Hallelujah, anyhow. Never let your troubles get you down. Whenever troubles come your way, hold your hands up high and say, Hallelujah, anyhow. Those words characterize the life of Bishop Barbara. Hallelujah, anyhow. In spite of hardship and difficulty, hallelujah, anyhow. In spite of injustice and bigotry, hallelujah, anyhow. In spite of war and violence, hallelujah, anyhow. And that, my friends, is the spirit of Mary Magdalene. That, my friends, is the tenacity of those who would follow in the footsteps of Jesus and his way of love. In spite of hardship and toil, hallelujah, anyhow. In spite of the fact that this Easter is the anniversary of the assassination and the martyrdom of Martin Luther King Jr., hallelujah, anyhow. In spite of the fact that these are hard times, Hallelujah, anyhow. Our work goes on. Our labor for love continues. And we will not cease. And we will not give up. Until this world reflects less our nightmare. And more God's dream. Where there's plenty good room for all God's children. Hallelujah, anyhow. When I get to heaven, I can't wait to hear Mary Magdalene and Bishop Barbara tell me he's risen. Hallelujah, anyhow. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We turn now to the prayers of the people, prayers asked for healing in body, mind, and spirit for those who have died, and for all the blessings of this life. Especially Patricia Whitney, Jim Herring Sr., Susan Walker, Wayne Cable, Roger Whitehead, Sean Mishra, Lydia Fioka, Nicole Maroque, Lisa Shoup, Melissa Poole, Tim Geiser, and Julie Dragon. We pray for all unemployed members of our congregation and their families and all victims and those affected by the coronavirus. We remember those who have died, especially Philip Whedon. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for peace in Jerusalem. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the Diocese of Chicago, Bishop-elect Paula Clark, and the Diocese of Rink and Southeastern Mexico, our sister diocese. We pray for those who are expecting, especially Valerie Eisenbart and John Ferrari, Andrea and Peter McIntyre, Eddie Rodriguez and Whitney Milliken, and Bill and Crystal Sykowski. And we pray for all who are struggling to conceive or dealing with infertility issues or have experienced the sudden loss of infants and children due to pregnancy problems or in childbirth. Pray for those serving in the armed forces, especially Luke Hedrick, Jamie Sargent, Dean Redman, and John Edstrom. We pray for all those on our long-term prayer list. And we celebrate all birthdays this week, especially the birthdays of Chloe Remsen, Audrey Barton, Beth Faber, Lori Polson, James Chandler, Charlie Sticks, and Daisy Therian. For whom else shall we pray? this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing, and the blessing of God, the Almighty Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day, and remain with you 
forever. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs>